Let's head on over to Norway, where we welcome in All Whites and Viking FK midfielder Joe Bell. Joe, thanks so much for your time today on the Kiwi Football Fix. Yeah, no problem. Excited to talk. Mate, did I get that right? Viking FK? I look at it and I see Viking. No, you did. You got it right. I was, I was also pronouncing it Viking for a long time, but uh, yeah, the Norwegians quickly corrected me. Right. It's Viking FK, so yeah, you got it. Okay, so now we know for sure 100% Viking FK. Joe, you're experiencing yeah. your first ever Norwegian winter. How is it treating you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been tough. It's very cold here. Um, I did grow up in the South Island, so I was a little bit used to it, but, you know, the past few weeks it's been as cold as negative 10. Oh. So... Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty brutal, but yeah, it's still a beautiful place and, and actually quite similar to New Zealand with the topography. You played all but one game in the, uh, in the season. I think it was 30 games long and you played 29, scored a couple of goals. In your own words, how did you rate your performance and the teams? Yeah, it was good. Uh, in terms of the team, we had a bit of a tough start, but it gradually got better through the year. Um, for myself, yeah, I was I was happy. I mean, the biggest thing I wanted to get out of out of coming to Norway was was a good amount of game time. So yeah, I think I achieved that. You know, in the first season, I think there's still uh, a lot more I can do this season. And we've actually had uh, our head coach our head coach step down following the end of the season, and we've got two new coaches come in. So, uh, yeah, a few, few changes in the team and, and slightly in the game style as well. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to, to what we can do this season. What does a, a change in coach mean for you? Because sometimes in, in sport it means that they come in with a, a broom and, and sweep the place clean. Are, are you assured of the, the next two years of your deal? Yeah, 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 it's definitely complicated in that side of football. But, uh, yeah, it was lucky for me. It was actually the, uh, the two assistant coaches that actually brought me in from the U.S. They played a, a big role in getting me across. They, they are the ones that have been promoted to the head coach positions. We actually have two. So, uh, yeah, for me, I think it's a good thing. But obviously, you know, football's a, football's a fickle game. So, yeah, just trying to stick with it and stay focused through – this preseason, then hopefully, yeah, have a good season. If you had to be highly critical of your own performance for Viking through the first season, how would you assess your performance? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest weakness, at least, that I'm focusing on is just the more defensive awareness in the midfield. Um, I tend to get a bit focused on what I can do with the ball and, and trying to get onto the ball. And I think... Uh, you know, sometimes I, I lose my patience and focusing on the defensive side. So I think when when you play better teams and, and we played a, a playoff game for the Europa League last season, I think when you play teams of that quality, obviously you have the ball a little bit less. So you need to make sure that your game's balanced and you're an all-rounder player. So, yeah, at the moment, that's what I'm focusing on. So is that more organisational, like dragging people here and there and, and, and just minding what what you're up to as well communication as well yeah to be honest it's a it's a lot of everything yeah the communication as you said that's a it's an interesting point because the boys mainly speak norwegian on the pitch so that's been a you know a separate challenge learning some of the language and making sure i'm able to communicate with the players but also understand what they're telling me how difficult is norwegian to pick up uh, uh, it's not easy but but I'm being there. Don't don't ask me to quote anything because uh, I won't. I don't think I'll uh, do very well. But yeah, I'm definitely getting there. You mentioned the Europa League tie with Aberdeen. Uh, you, you went down two mm. nil, but I think the team put in a pretty good account of itself. What did that tell you about how far away Norwegian football is from the rest of the European competitions? Yeah, I think it was a it was a really interesting game for me. Obviously, we kind of hoped the result would go better, but yeah, just to gauge how the team performed and in those kind of settings, and you know, I think it just further gives me a better understanding of European football. But yeah, the team 
we actually played okay and I think the game could have went either way so you know I think it's quite a it's a good standout for Norwegian football and the ability to compete in those games I mean there's teams such as Bodo Glimt who uh, won the league last season who took AC Milan to uh, you know the the 90th minute before unfortunately losing but yeah, the, there's quite a few teams that are quite strong and can perform in Europe. So I think it's a really good uh, opportunity for young players and it's a strong enough league that it gets watched by other European clubs as well. How did you actually come to reside in Norway, Joe? Because a few years at the University of Virginia, I, I would have thought that maybe the logical progression for you would have been into the MLS. There was an opportunity to, to enter the draft um, and I'm not sure how much understanding there is of, of that whole system. But yeah, basically for me, it was deciding whether I would want to go into the draft where I would have little control over which team I would end up in in the MLS or, uh, or pursuing the European option. And, you know, after sitting down with my parents for, for a long time, we felt that Norway would be a, a better option for me. And, you know, to be honest, I, I couldn't be much happier. It would be great without the COVID. So I could have came home, but... Yeah, in regards for what I was looking for, I think I got everything uh, that I needed last season. So hopefully that continues. But yeah, it was a, it was an interesting and difficult choice. Yeah. How hard is it to, to stay grounded as a, a young footballer when you've got somebody from a professional outfit travelling halfway around the world to say, hey, we like you? <laughs> To be honest, in America, it's not too hard because, uh, <laughs> you know, you spend you spend most of your days with the the basketball team on the at the university or even the American football team, and you know those players are walking into multi million dollar contracts. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not too hard. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Look, 2020, I think, uh, it, it was going to be a big year for you, Joe. Uh, you, as you said, you'd come out of the uh, the Under-20s World Cup and impressed there. You'd made your debut for the, the fully-fledged All-Whites against Ireland and Lithuania, and football commentators were really impressed with what you did there. And 2020 was going to be all about the Olympics. It was going to be all about... Belgium. It was going to be all about England at Wembley, and then all of that was taken away. So, how how did you cope with, I suppose, the absence of the football and that loss? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was tough. It was something. Obviously, the Olympics uh, was really excited for, and yeah, as you mentioned, the England game at Wembley. Wow, that would have been a, an incredible experience for everyone involved. Um, so yeah, it was tough, but I just tried to to keep everything in perspective. And I think, you know, there were definitely people worse off and, and having things taken away from them that were, were far worse than what was happening to me. So I just tried to stay focused on, you know, the football at hand and, and stay focused on the season and, you know, kind of let the, the time go by. Uh, and yeah, hopefully things are looking more promising for the future and especially for you know, getting back as an international team and getting some more games under our belts. And, you know, it's hard to keep track of all the all the updates. But, yeah, hopefully the Olympics goes forth this year um, because I think, you know, coming off the the 20s and the national team experience, uh, well, a couple of years ago now, uh, yeah, I think it's something that, you know, personally I'm really excited for, but also I think the, the team should be as well. Do you hold out much hope for the Olympics? Because if reports are to be believed, you've got government insiders saying, there's no way in the world that this thing can go ahead. What, what, what say you? You must be uh, in WhatsApp groups with your All Whites teammates or your, your, your under-23s teammates, and uh, you must have a, uh, an inkling as to whether it's going to go ahead or not? Uh, to be honest, I really do not. Um, I'm... <laughs> I'm no professional at understanding this situation. So, yeah, I'm really not sure. Obviously, fingers crossed, but you got to do what's what's safe and, you know, make sure that we follow all the, the protocols to, you know, go ahead and make sure it's a it's a suitable, you know, opportunity to, to, to do it. So, yeah, I, I really don't know. But, yeah, deep down, I really hope so. But, yeah, safety first. Yep, safety first. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Listen, the, the All Whites debut performance, how, how did that feel, getting out there, donning the All Whites shirt 
and and playing with some of our great names presently. Well, yeah, that was a it was a huge honour. Firstly, um, yeah, you kind of you kind of do get a little bit overwhelmed, but when you get in the moment, everything kind of you know seeps away, and you're, you're just playing football again. So, yeah, it was. <laughs> It was quite, uh, you do have to pinch yourself when you're playing in the midfield and you've got Winston Reid behind you. So, yeah, it was, a, it was a fantastic experience and, you know, hopefully, hopefully a few more in the future. I'm not going to mince my words here, Joe. You did receive rave reviews for your performances. Like, how, how does that make you feel, knowing that so early in your All Whites career you looked so comfortable to so many? Okay, that's nice. Maybe I need to read more of the reviews on myself. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's promising. I think, you know, with, with Danny as coach, he's really pushing, uh, you know, the play style where we want to move the ball and, and compete with the top teams. And he's giving a lot of young players a chance. And I think there's a lot of quality, uh, as we showed with the players in the U20s. So, uh, yeah, it was obviously nice to have, what I thought, yeah, okay, maybe it was a good game. I think there's there's better to come in the future, and I think, yeah, the team's results will come better as well. But yeah, I think just in that moment, it was a it was a fantastic opportunity, and I just tried to play normal football. So I think, you know, we're starting to build more of an identity, and you know, unfortunately, as you said, the the COVID situation has interrupted that. But there's been a lot of work going on in the background to keep us connected and, and keep building on that. So hopefully when, when we do get back together, it's only going to get better. My next guest is a, a guy called Jason Pine, who you may have heard of. He, he calls the odd football game every now and then. Uh, he has yeah. gone on record as to say that you will one day be the All-Whites full-time skipper. What does a comment like that mean to you? Well, wow, that's that's incredibly nice from Piney. Obviously, I know him quite well, and he's, you know, a fantastic bloke. So yeah, that, that does mean a lot. That does mean a lot, and it's definitely a, an aspiration of mine. I think there's many, many more steps to take before that becomes a reality. But wow, yeah, it's a very nice comment. As long as you're not barking I'll thank out him orders. The next in, time I see him. Yeah, as long as you're not barking out orders in Norwegian, Joe. <laughs> no, my Norwegian won't get that good. <laughs> hey, so what does 2021 look like for you? A couple of months away from the start of the Norwegian League and then I'm assuming at some point we're going to have some World Cup qualifiers as well. Yeah, hopefully. So, yeah, we've just started pre-season now. So, as you said, yeah, we're a couple of months away from the start of the Norwegian season. And then, yeah, hopefully, obviously, it's, you know, it's complicated, but... You know, there's plans for, you know, the international games and then, as you said, the World Cup qualifiers. So I think it could be a busy year. Um, yeah, I think with the COVID situation, you do just have to focus on, you know, only a couple of weeks ahead of yourself. So at the moment, that's pre-season and just making sure I'm fit and, and ready to get into the Norwegian season. Yeah, and stay warm over there in those minus 10 degree temperatures, mate. Stay indoors and I'll crank the heating. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying my best. Joe, an absolute pleasure to catch up with you here on the Kiwi Football Fix. Go well over there. And, uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the white of the all-whites again soon. Cheers for your time, pal. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah, appreciate it. Stay safe.